Hello and welcome to this video about debugging Scala 3 in VS Code. The debugger is a powerful tool to get a precise understanding of your code. Given a task you must perform in a code base, whether it is adding a new feature or fixing the bug, the debugger can help you spot the part of the code you need to work on and understand how it behaves and how you can change it. In this video, I'm going to show you the full potential of the Scala 3 debugger in VS Code. I will use the debug steps to walk through a live running program. I will talk about threads and show how to debug a multi-threaded application. I will use the debug console and the watch to run code at runtime. I'll go over more advanced types of breakpoints like the conditional breakpoint and the lock point. And finally, I will define some launch configurations to configure the debuggy in different ways. Let's go ahead and get started. Here, I opened a Scala 3 application in VS Code. The Scala extension that is called Metals is enabled and the project is already imported. If you don't know how to install VS Code or Metals, you can check out the links in the description of the video. This project is a simple web notepad. It contains a web server consisting of a few endpoints. There is one endpoint to get the full list of nodes, one endpoint to create a new node, and the last endpoint to delete a node. We will use the debugger to go deeper inside those methods. But the main goal of the video is to understand the debugger, so we don't care so much about the code itself. On top of your main class, you should see the run and debug lenses. If I click on run, the server will start, but I won't be able to debug it. So I'm going to click on debug instead. Cool, the server started, started successfully. I can see this line in the console that corresponds to this println in the code. I can also see in the debug view that some threads are running. Let's open the application in the browser. Here is the simple notepad application that we are going to debug. There are some inputs that I can fill to create a new node, note, and below there is the list of created nodes. Going back to the main topic of this video, how can I debug this program? I need to add a breakpoint. A breakpoint is a position in the code where we want the program to pause. Here, for instance, I want the program to pause each time I create a new node. To do so, I add a breakpoint in the create note method by clicking here. And now what? I have this red dot, but nothing happened. Except that if the program runs through that line of code, it should pause its execution. Let's try to create a new node. And indeed, the program paused its execution. I can see here the values of the local variables. There is the title, whose value is note one, and the content. There is also the this instance of the current object in which we are, that is the web server object. To continue the program, I can click on continue, and the node is created. The server is still running, waiting for other requests. At any time, if you change the code of the program, you can reload the debugger to take that change into account. When the program is paused, I can use this little toolbox to walk through the code line by line and understand very precisely what is happening. So for instance here, I want to enter into this repository create node method, and I can do so by clicking on this step into button or by hitting F7 on my keyboard. 
Each time you enter a new method, you will see it appear on the top of the stack. Currently, the top of the stack is the repository.createNote method. We can also explore the stack by clicking on the previous method. But remember that the current execution point is the top, of the in the, is the top method. Let's step into what's again. This time to go to uuid.randomuuid. This is a low-level Java method from the JDK, so probably I went too far into the code. I'm going to click on step out to execute the method and pause back to where it was called. Each time you step out of a method, you will see the return value in the list of local variables. In this case, we stepped out of random UUID so we can see the generated ID. We are still on this line of code because the program still needs to call toString. I want to go over the toString and pause on the next line. I can do so by clicking on step over. The variable ID is created. I step over this other line to see that the variable note is created. It contains the same ID and also the title note one and the content. Sometimes you may want to replay the current method from the beginning. There is a hidden button to do that, which is a restart frame button. That's really powerful. Beware though that it does not go back in time. It will not undo what has already been executed like the mutation of a variable or the creation of a file. In such cases, the second execution can have a different and confusing behavior. If I want to jump fast from one point of the code to the other, the trick is to add a breakpoint and continue the execution. The program will pause as soon as it hits the breakpoint. Let's talk about threads now. This program is a multi-threaded application. Each time the server receives a request from a client, it creates a new thread to handle that request and to respond back to the client. This way, it can respond to many requests at the same time. How can we debug a multi-threaded program? Here, I still have my breakpoint, so each time I create a new node, it poses a new thread. I pause one thread, the other ones are still running. I pause a second thread and a third one. Here I can see three pause threads. I can switch from one to the other by clicking on them. That's the thread handling node one and the one for node two and the one for node three. If I use the step button, it only affects the current thread. For instance, I can move inside this thread while I do that, the other threads are still idle. Nothing happened here. I continue the execution of this one. Node 2 is created. Then this one to create node 3. Then the last one. In conclusion, when debugging a multi-threaded application, you only need to think about one thread at a time, and you can switch from one thread to the other whenever you need to. This is particularly, particularly useful to reproduce concurrency issues between threads. Sometimes when debugging, it can be useful to execute some additional pieces of code that may or may not appear in the program itself. It can help you get some more information about the state of the program or it can help you understand the behavior of some particular piece of code. Here, I'm in the delete node method and I can only access the ID of the node. I would also like to know its title before it gets deleted. To do so, I'm going to type a Scala expression in the debug console. I try rep and thanks to autocompletion, I get repository and then get note of ID. Executing this expression returns a node containing title node 2. The debug console can compile and execute in any Scala expression, even the most complex ones involving implicit resolution or macro expansion. It uses the Scala 3 compiler to get the very precise result. The debug console is not a REPL, as you cannot reuse the results of previous expressions. However, it can accept 
multi-line expressions. You can type a new line using Shift Enter. Now, suppose I, that I want to get the title every time there is an ID in the scope of the debugger. It would be cumbersome to retype the same expression again and again. The solution is to use a watch, a place where you can store expressions. Each time the debugger pauses at a new position, it will evaluate all the watches and show their results. Here, I create a new watch to show the title, and now, each time a note gets deleted, I can quickly see its title. So far, we only used simple breakpoints. We are now going to see more advanced types of breakpoints, such as the lock point and the conditional breakpoint. When debugging, I am often tempted to add println statements inside the code. This is very useful to get a trace of all that is happening during the execution of a program. But when I do so, I need to reload the debugger and then later I need to remember to remove the state statement, which I often forget to. The lock point is a better alternative to the println statement. You can add a lock point by right-clicking here and select Add a lock point. It will not pause the program, but it will print a message as if there was a println here. As in a println, you can put interpolated values in the message of a lock point using the Scala syntax dollar braces. A conditional breakpoint is like a breakpoint, but it only pauses when a given condition is met. Here, I can edit this breakpoint by right-clicking and then specifying an expression. The expression must be a condition. For instance, I can say that I want the program to pause if the title contains debug. If I create a node that does not contain debug, the debugger does not pause. But if I create a node that contains debug, it pauses. Conditional breakpoints are useful to pause the program at a particular state when you expect a bug to happen. At the beginning of the video, I showed you how to start the debugger on a main class. You can also start it on a test class by right-clicking here and selecting Debug Test. You can do the same on a single test. Alternatively, you can go to the Test Explorer and choose the test that you want to run. You can run all the tests of a project, all the tests in a package, in a test class, or you can run a single test. When running a main class, you may want to pass it some arguments or to configure it with some environment variables. Here, for instance, the web server object can read the environment variable named port. To do so, I can create a launch configuration. I go to the debug view and then click on Create a launch configuration. It creates a file launch.json in the .vscode folder. This file will contain all the launch configurations. I can add one by clicking here and then find the Scala main class configuration. There are a few parameters that we need to specify now. I give a name to this configuration. I specify the main class. I don't want to pass any argument or JVM, op JVM option, but I want to add an environment variable port of value 1234. The configuration is added here, and I can click on it to start the debugger. We can see that the port is now 1234. You can have as many launch configurations as you want. The fun thing about them is that you can start many many of them at the same time. So here I have the server running and I can also launch the tests. 
I now have two debuggers. I can switch from one to the other here and also here. If I stop one debugger, the other is still running. This is sometimes useful. If you want to debug some server and some client in two separate processes. This is the end of the video. But before I leave you, I would like to share a few less known features. The first one is that you can change the values of your variables at runtime. Here, the title is not one, and I'm going to change it to debug. And it worked. I created a note with the debug title. The last feature is that I can put a breakpoint on a field. Each time the field is accessed, it paused the program. Here, it paused the program because the field directory was accessed. That's all. Thanks for watching this video and have fun debugging. <laughs>